right, welcome back. Now, time for us to talk about our top story of today. Now, talking about sustainable development goals, a lot of people, they come outside talk, say, how can Nigeria actually achieve them? We get the Kajat guest in the house who will join us, talk more about the sustainable development goals and if it's possible for us to achieve it inside Weobodo, Nigeria here. She now the founder and executive director of the Conversation Cafe. You will get to hear more about what the Conversation Cafe is all about. And she also don't coordinate and facilitate multiple delegations delegations of uh, model United Nations conferences for inside Wubudu, Nigeria. Over um, six years, National they do this one, as well as we present Nigeria um, and for inside several um, occasions and conferences um, as the UN annual UN Youth Assembly for inside the United Nations headquarters and plenty of other things we should actually do consigning um, educating um, Nigerians, especially the youth, on sustainable development goals. Help me welcome Chisom Obumo inside the Good Morning Niger studio. I hope I did not just murder your name. No, you did not. Thank you very much. Good, good to have you. Good to have you too. Thank you. All right, Chisom. Um, so sustainable development goals, SDGs. First yes. of all, we would like to make you educate people about what the SDGs uh, mean. Okay, so the SDGs came from the MDGs. Before the SDGs, there was something called the Millennium mm. Development Goals. So after I ended at 2015, the SDGs came about, and then there are 17 of them. The 17 SDGs represents different issues being faced in the world and things that we hope to achieve in year 2030. So there's SDGs SDG 1, which is no poverty, there, are, there is SDG 4, which is quality education, SDG 5, gender equality, 17, peace, justice, and good partnerships. Basically, these SDGs are just to help the world issues we are facing. So let's take poverty as the first one. Now, we hear I'm just recently in the poverty rate. Nigeria actually overtake India as regards to the poorest country. Yeah. How can this be achieved with collaboration with, with United Nations? Well, the United Nations has been working hard to make sure that we don't get to this point. But then I think that I always say that you have to work on the country first before you bring in any sort of organization to come and help you. We as a nation are not really ready to get into get out of this poverty situation we have we're not lot, ready we're not ready how no we the citizens are ready but the government isn't ready yeah. to work together with us to get out of this i mean it's 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 not it's not it's not lovable to hear that we are do we are in this position as at now but then the only way the un can help us to become better is um giving us more access to um bigger nation states that could collaborate with us to make sure that you know we come down from this from this hierarchy that we are in as well on us on our side we are also supposed to the government is also supposed to equip the citizens give them good conducive systems to be able to generate things that would make us become better Let's and come out down. of what are these conducive systems? Because now we hear um, stories of the Abacha loot being sent yes. um, to poor people. Yes. Are these part of the systems you're talking about? No, I don't think that that is a good idea. I mean, I, I read something on Instagram yesterday on Alibaba's page, and I totally agree with what he was saying. You know, we need to invest back into this, into with, the, with uh, uh, um, Abacha's money. If invested properly, I mean, the turnover from it would be huge in the next two, three years. If you give the money to the youth, to um, to the poor well, people, yeah. what are they going to do with it? How much of the money are you even going to give to them? I mean, okay. I'll quickly, I, I would quickly like to read out these uh, SDGs. The seventeen of them. They are not too long and not too, of course, uh, yeah. you know, not too difficult. The first one, like you mentioned, is po uh, no poverty. Yeah. that's the very first one. Second one, uh, no uh, zero hunger. Number three, good health and well-being. Number four, quality education. Then five, we get gender equality. Six, clean water and sanitation. Seven, affordable, uh, yes, affordable and clean energy. Number eight, now, decent work and economic growth. Number nine, industry, innovation and infrastructure. And then number 10, reduced inequality. For 11, we have sustain, uh, sustainable cities and communities. For number 12, um, responsible consumption and production, very important. Number 13, climate action. Number 14, life below water. 15 is life and land. 16, 
peace, justice, and strong institution. And then for number 17 and the final one, partnership for the goals. Now, these are all the 17 SDGs. Of all these ones, it's sad to say that not many have we actually achieved in Nigeria. Have we even achieved anyone? <laughs> In fact, I just I'm trying to be. Okay, I'm trying well, to be, yeah. to well <laughs> thing is, it's everywhere. Mm. But um, I just want to say that it cannot be achievable without the SDG four, mm -hmm. which is quality education. Of course. And I'm also I'm also particular about seventeen, which yes. is partnership, partnership for, goals. for goals. I feel like those are the two main main goals that we as a nation should be very much interested in because. You know, if you have quality education, and by quality education, I don't mean going to school and just going around the curriculum. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have access to alternative education, if you have access to um, um, voluntary, um, no, vocational, vocational education, education, for people who do not have access to, you know, the proper formal education, that could help them get skills that could generate something that would bring down the rates of poverty. Mm -hmm. All those things are vital. If we have partnerships that could yield um, profits, that could also help us as regards hunger, poverty, and the rest of it mm -hmm. all. So we are not there yet. I mean, we hope to achieve all of this by 2030, and this is 2018. Okay, okay. Maybe so. I quickly ask you one, one very quick question. This one is a digression okay. from what we're discussing about. Now, of course, we know, say, uh, presently, um, our Senate and our President don't sign the Not Too Young to Rule bill. Uh, my first question is, what do you think about this new bill, knowing that you are more or less a youth leader? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about this new bill uh, concerning the young people and how this can actually push young people forward in terms of politics and leading ourselves. And secondly, yeah. uh, also, being the fact that you're a youth leader, are you having any political aspirations? <laughs> Anytime soon. So let's start with the first one. Okay, let's start. One okay. Um, <laughs> um, yes, I am, I am in full support of the Not Too Young to Run bill. I am very excited about it. Because whenever I'm being asked the, this question, the first thing I always say is, if I am old enough to vote, then I am old enough to be voted for, and that is one. But secondly, as much as I am excited about it, because, I mean, if you look at the population of the country, you would find out that there are over 70% 70, 70 of the population are young people. So do you know that if we were an independent country, we would be able to rule ourselves? We would be able to be our governors and our presidents and or what not by ourselves. Mm. The only problem I have, or the only thing, I don't have a problem, but the only thing that I would love for us to do as young people is to do hard, smart, and commitment work and not be like our past leaders. Okay. We can do literally everything they are doing and more. I mean, the president of France is currently in the country and he's what? He's 40 or thereabouts. And he's doing amazing things for his nation state. So. And yes, concerning me running for a position, don't worry, one day you would invite me and you'd, you would have, there'll be a title we'll before. In a different capacity. Yes, there'll be a title before my name. Right. Let, let's just go a little bit personal. Now, you work with the United Nations and uh, we see you doing greatly Thank in the United you. Nations for over six years. How has it been working with the United Nations? It's been bittersweet, it's majorly amazing. I am living my dreams. So literally anything coming my way is, I just see it as a learning curve to become more than what I was. I mean, the culture, the people, the access to a lot of, yes, the access to a lot of culture, people learning because we as Nigerians behave as Nigerians and then you have to work from somebody in China, um, a Chinese person, you have to work with somebody from Singapore, Andorra, different countries. Amazing experience. I love the fact that, you know, we get to travel. I hate the fact that we get to travel and don't explore because we are oh, busy, yeah. you know, and all of that. But it's been amazing. And then a lot of research and a lot of work. You have to be able to work, like sit down, do a lot of research, do your field, do your researches. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's been good. Nice one. So let's talk about the Conversation Cafe. Yes. As the founder, the executive um, director of the Conversation Cafe, what is it all about? Well, the Conversation Cafe is a safe space. It's an, initi an initiative I created to give 
people the platform to share, to connect, to learn on alternative education for societal development. I mean, especially in this country where we like to, we're at two cross ends, we like to have so much fun or we work too hard. So we, we do both of them at the extreme. And I'm trying to like come together and say, you know what, how about we, do, we have conversations? Because one of the problems we have in this country is the fact that we do not communicate effectively. And it is very important personally, career-wise, relationship, family, and for the national growth actually to communicate effectively, to know <coughs> some of the things not thought in the curriculum and to be able to share, you know. So yes, the Conversation Cafe is a platform for alternative <coughs> education, partially inspired by the sustainable development goals. Yes, so like there's always, <coughs> you'd always find the mix in me, yes. So sorry, you always find the mix, yes. you know, so. <coughs> That's it. Um, we have a conversation ca cafe on Friday, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, that's great. Uh, all right. Now, concerning the conversation cafe, if um, you know if people are trying to reach you to get more information about the conversation cafe, how yeah. can they reach you on your social oh, media handles? Yes. Yeah, so um, on Instagram, we are the conversation cafe underscore. On Twitter, we are also at the conversation cafe underscore. T H E conversation cafe underscore. Then if you want to send an email, you can send it to conversationcafe at gmail.com. Okay, thank yes. you very much. Thank, thank you for so joining us in the studios. Me. Hopefully we'll have, we'll have the chance to bring you back, find out more about the Conversation Cafe and about the United Nations. Yes, I look forward to coming back. It's been amazing so far. All right, then, thank you so To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.